All right, uh, greetings family. This is Bomani Tayemba and we're live on Revolutionary Camp. And uh, tonight we have our guest uh, who just came in town to Georgia and he's gonna share with you his world of traveling yeah, from Georgia to Ghana and back. All right, my brother. <laughs> Introduce yourself to our people. Okay, okay. My name is Kokai Bokari Pastel. And I'm born in Atlanta, Georgia. I was born in the West End. Uh, I attended the shrines of the Black Madonna. Uh, like I went to Miss Tillery across from Kroger. But I like grew up in Macon, Georgia, since like from the age of nine to like eighteen. And after that, I came back to Atlanta. So I'm from Georgia, straight. Straight from Georgia. Yeah. And um, see, so bit you know. So what time or moment in your life it connected where you know you were open to traveling to Africa or just going to a country like Ghana? Okay. Um, so when I was at Emory University, um, I was an African studies major. And so basically with the program, there's opportunity to study abroad in Africa. So the choices were between like, uh, South Africa, Senegal, Ghana. Uh, I really wanted to go to Kenya first, but the option was not there. So between those options, I don't know, I felt uh, connected with Ghana. Um, so yeah, that was the start of it all. That was supposed to be four months. Four months, uh, yeah. wow, so those are your options of country and it came down to it and Ghana was the country. Yeah, Ghana was the country, yeah. And uh, how long did you uh, initially plan to stay in Ghana? It was supposed to only be four months. Like it, it was a, a a semester program, right. so it's supposed to be August through December, and that's the that, like that's the completion of the, you know, semester. All right. Uh, before you go on to the other process, uh, hmm. uh, tell people how you actually um, you know, what you actually did during the four months. Uh, is it just all when you need here study abroad program? Um, you know, can you elaborate? Uh, especially based on your experience. Okay, so when I say study abroad, the program that I went through was the CIEE um, program. I think it's the Council for International Educational Exchange. Uh, and it was like a, basically like a, a organization that was linked with Emory. So they sent us directly to them. And study abroad consists of like taking classes at the university with Ghanaians. So it's like, it's, it's, immersion through like an academic a atmosphere like directly so we're being like put like in direct communication with the intellectuals in Ghana you know so it's it's we take classes we also go on excursions on like to different waterfalls into different regions to learn about the people like through experience so study study abroad is like a a, a, a giving you a, a full understanding of like the culture and uh, the, the various cultures in different regions and just like, you know, how things are structured, like economic opportunities and everything you can learn it through study abroad. Oh, perfect. So you really got a, a lot from the program. It's really yeah. something that really just kind of mold you into learning more about your culture and wanting more to just learn more about Ghana. Yeah. And so you basically had an opportunity to travel around entire country of Ghana? Yeah, yeah. Uh, to various regions. Yeah, we went to like um, Boti Falls, that's in like Volta region. We went to uh, Ebri, which is, uh, I think that's eastern region, right? That's uh, it's kind of eastern region and yeah. it's like right um, outside of uh, Eastern Ghana. So yeah, it's like yeah, yeah, outside yeah, right, yeah, right outside, so yeah. Kinda, in the mountains somewhat yeah yeah, yeah. So th but Kuo, yeah, it's yeah. the only way to the eastern region in that case yeah kumasi like they took us to several places so you've been around the normal source route and also you did you so you've been to kumasi and also you've been to tamale yeah so you've been to mole national park yeah definitely that's where the animals are yeah so you had so you had a chance to really get to experience ghana you feel yeah definitely I got I got a full experience Informative. through the program. So yeah, is it something that you recommend more to our students that are you know maybe thinking about doing something in Africa but not really clear, but they're looking for a way to just have a smooth you know connection over, especially yeah. if they want to spend more than you know maybe our tour 
and of two weeks, and maybe they just want to do something more dealing with their program academically. Yes, I think I, I would strongly suggest uh, like being in a new country through the academic system. I feel like it's one of the safest ways to like come into a new country, and the people that you are dealing with are usually professional, and you know, somewhat like there's a slight consciousness that you can find in a community like that. Um, so I would strongly say, I feel like that's one of the greatest benefits to attending a university is the, the travel opportunities that are out there. Like more than the job opportunities, I feel like the travel opportunities are very valuable in these university systems in the States. Excellent. So it's, and, and these are the things that we talk about that, um, you know, while you're here in this country, you have to take advantage of the opportunities exactly. of, uh, traveling, exactly. uh, uh, opportunities of just, um, having access to different trades and business and, and certain things that you can just kind of use to propel your world into the global world of just being self-reliant. Uh, but four months, that's incredible. Yeah. Um, and um, you're, you're a senior about to graduate. Yes, yes, yes. Hopefully next month. Hopefully next month. But that's, that's we'll excellent. see. So what do you, uh, so what do you, what you're graduating with? I'm graduating with a, um, a bachelor's in African studies. So I was an African studies major. And you put your work in because you, you, know, you made a trek. Yeah. The reconnection, that journey, um, the pilgrimage. pilgrimage and uh, you, 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 you followed through to the course and then now realize that uh, you've also spent an extended amount of time yeah. in, to, in to Ghana. So if you could just elaborate more about your extended time that you spent in Ghana and why you ended up spending more time in Ghana. Yeah, like when I initially went to Ghana, it was kind of like, okay, I'm studying abroad, I'm going on a trip, like I'm going to be there, I'm sure it'll be cool, then I'm going to come back. But it's like I went over there and it just, it felt familiar, like it felt like this is a place that, like I've been before, like it felt, it felt, not to say necessarily that I was welcome, it wasn't like this, like, you know, you know, kumbaya, kumbaya thing, like where, oh, Oh, welcome, welcome. But there were a lot of people that did welcome me very mm. well. Um, but I just felt like the genuineness, the level of love and compassion that people show each other generally on a on a general level, like pe like humans have respect for each other's lives. Like like you you barely see people fight there, and also just to see so so many people and so much movement. It's also I think it's therapeutic to see so many people, you know, in the flesh, movement, different types mm. of people. It's I don't know. It's just it just feels very humanistic, and it's I don't know. It just feels natural. It feels like it's it's not a front. It feels like people are being a little bit more real. Well, perfect, God. That's um, that's a good way to this uh, shit. Yeah, I know. Mean, that's just surface level. Like I'm just um, it's like I'm trying to say a lot, but I'm trying to. Like, when you ask me these questions, it's a lot that's going through my head about the place. Uh, and so much you ex experience, and it's just so different from your normal day-to-day -day in America. Yeah. And that's what I'm which we're looking to get more and more people to do, open their minds up to traveling to the African continent, reconnecting, thinking about even starting your career, business, or many things that you normally wouldn't think you should do. Um, and we're, we're, we're creating an energy to where we want to see more of us being young investors and business folks into development and taking advantage of all of the opportunities now. The, the, the Asians uh, shouldn't have all the fun. Uh, yeah. You see, you know, so, um, you know, from a level of the university, you see Ghana, from the level of you being at Emory University, you getting ready to graduate and you going to Ghana and you learn about Ghana, did that change the perspective of you now wanting to possibly do more of your business and investments in Ghana versus more so in America. <coughs> <coughs> Excuse me. Yes, definitely. The answer, the, the answer is yes. Um, I would like to invest much more in Ghana. I feel like the market is more lucrative. I feel like there are less barriers to entry. Like I feel like it's a, it's it's a fresh market. Like with like being in, in growing up in an environment like the states and seeing how we kind of do things here, mm -hmm. just to even take a few of the ideas there, like can be a lucrative and it not only help you but it also can help the people. So it's like yeah, like I would definitely like to invest and I feel like also being in Ghana has has taught me how to hustle a little bit more. Like people over there are hustling, <laughs> like seriously. 
Like a lot of my friends are hustling. Like, God, <laughs> like what comes to mind? What comes to mind are the Castle Boys. Like the Castle Boys are hustling. Like Elmina Castle, Cape Coast Castle, they are hustling. But it's good though. Like you, if you watch them, you can you can you can actually learn something. And just watching people in general, every like you see black business in action and thriving and vibrant. Like you go to the market and you see like all these black faces and that are happy and that are welcoming. Like it's an experience to go to the market, not just oh I'm going to this big corporation, this big building. Everybody's not gonna be making eye contact. Like I'm just going for my good. You know, I might not be treated well, so yeah, yeah, it's. It well, seems like you're ready for repatriation. Yeah, definitely. Huh? Yeah. So, uh, when you're looking to make your permanent move. Um. Right now, I feel like, I mean, as soon as possible, but it definitely depends on like uh, my financial, you know, stability. I've been there for like two plus years, but my finances haven't necessarily been the best. Like. I'm grateful for the help that I received from like my 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 family, uh, like very grateful. But you know, a dollar goes a long way over there. So, like you can you can kind of manage on your day to day. But I also realized that I would like to be over there and like, you know, help the community more. Like like I said, invest in like I have friends that want to go to university. Like, I should be able to help them because it's like I have this opportunity from being over here. I should be able to share some of it with them, you know, um, because they've shared, like, their country with me, you know, in a way they, they've, like, I do feel accepted there. I, I, I do feel a sense of acceptance, uh, and it wasn't easy to get that acceptance. And it took me uh, taking time to understand their culture for me to get that acceptance, but... Yeah, yeah. So what an experience then. Once again, family, um, um, Bomani Tamba here, and we're talking about talking to our good brother who has been spending <laughs> much time in Ghana, and he has came back, and now, since you've been back, how do you see America based on your experience in Africa? Uh, I see America to be, like, it's, I, I'm, I'm, I'm remaining positive. Like, it's been cool. Um, like I've been back to America twice since going to Ghana the first time. And when I came, I was kind of in a negative vibe because initially I wasn't feeling good to be back. Like um, I was here, but I wanted to be there. And I can say that this is the first time that I'm fully embracing being back and I enjoy it. Like I enjoy the good and the bad. Like it's like I'm feeling positive. Like I feel like it's positivity that takes you far. Like most situations just... Try to try to handle it to where everyone can win. You know, everyone should be satisfied. Like, right. and I feel like it was that extra time in Ghana that got me to this point. Like, that's why I was feeling uneasy those other times I came back because it's like I need to go and learn more. Like, wow. I need to gather myself. And now I feel like I'm at a point where I'm good. I'm no matter where I am. It's like I'm good. This is this is beautiful. Like, it's like. The nature in Georgia is just as beautiful as the nature in Ghana. It's two different types of natures, but they're both beautiful. And so I just, I mean, I give thanks for, for both. Like, it's it's great. And, I mean, I feel like a lot of prosperity comes from being positive and in action. You can be positive and not move and not making any move, but you got to be positive and put yourself out there. And prosperity, I'm, I'm learning the prosperity trick. It's, it's very recent for me. Well, that's uh, excellent. And um, yeah. I mean, as far as this, just having the, the courage to venture off and especially uh, you know, your first time in Africa yeah. and just being just open to the culture and it seemed like it has transformed you to where it's uh, it just elevated your consciousness. Yeah. And I also see that it also also elevated you into a more a mind of an entrepreneur. So you're doing business in Africa. Yes. And you're you're doing import, export and things like that. Yes. Just yes, yes. elaborate because people always uh, wanna know, you know, what kind of business can you do from the get go for the start? So someone like yourself would have been there for that time frame. And, uh, share some of the things that you have uh, gotten involved with and if it was successful or not. Mm, okay. As of right now, I'm doing 
uh, a small business. It's like a startup business. It's my first time testing something out like this. Mm -hmm. But and this is something I feel like I learned from Castle Boys, especially at Elmina Castle, Kwame, uh, Indum, uh, Quincy, Jigga, yeah, all <laughs> of y'all, even Boys One, even you, yeah. But yeah, I, I learned, I learned like how they, how they, they, in a way, it's like passive aggressive like selling tactics and they get it done like they i feel like they profit and so also my dad motivated me but this time now i'm selling goods like backpacks purses dashikis kufi hats you know trousers sandals because all made in ghana all made in ghana a That's lot of stuff is even from tamale i traveled 13 hours wow. to get goods and and i had a help of my friend knee boy knee boy Bosu, yeah, knee boy, he helped me. Like we went, we went there to Tamale, gather all these goods, and I had to bring them on the plane. But oh, it's I, I think it's it's good for people to have access to to Ghana, you know, materials because a lot of things that we have here can be very expensive. Yeah, absolutely, and uh, we talked about manufacturing and things like that. And the reason why we can literally make everything in Africa and we have to get away from the stigma that uh, if we need to get something mass produced or something produced, we have to get it done in, uh, you know, somewhere in Asia. Yeah, somewhere, uh, yeah. Yeah, and that's, uh, you know, that's a falsification of um, you know, consciousness or just, just you know, not real at all. So that's why we market uh, you know, about the experience in Africa. And a lot of times people are not familiar because they've never been to these countries. And they yeah. know, you know we talk about these different countries. But... Our goal is to always share with our you know, family, our friends, our folks out there. Just the experience of being in Africa that it's never what you, anyone have told you it's about. You just got to be there for yourself to experience the experience. And none of us really know how you might turn out as far as what you're looking to do. Like um, the love of, you know, we started going and as and there's never the uh, evolution of tourism, of evolution of taking groups and busloads of people with this transformed the way it has to where you you know you go into different countries and now you have yeah. the the momentum, I mean it's incredible. But that is the, the, the you know, and things that I never thought I can literally accomplish in America, I can see myself accomplishing there in Ghana. But the fact of it is, you know, it's back to the point where you have to just process everything and you have to be open to everything and then you have to be just think outside of that box. Like, yeah. you know, you're living in America, can I actually live in Ghana? You're doing business here, you're doing certain things in America. Can I literally do that? And that's what people like ourselves do. We just give you that experience, but you took it to a whole different level. Yeah. It's like, I'm going to stay here for this time, and I'm not even going to go back. I'm going to stay for this time, and you've been back and forth. So you have built a certain level of where you see, and you have a clarity of how the international business and things flow. Yes. So it's good to see that you're building onto it. And, and you know you know how we do. That's what we do. We do business startup and development so yeah. uh, we're going to help our brother build his brand and things and i'm already giving you pointers as far as how we do a documentation and website and things like that because more of us need to, to enterprise earlier at a younger age yeah you know, why you know the, those who are, are at the point where they wait until they retire is what it is um, but it's like can you literally wait for another 20 30 years before you start doing business yeah like it's, it's nah you, you can't <laughs> you see I'm, I'm I'm laughing I'm laughing because just yesterday my friend Damon from high school, uh, he was like he was like, like it's funny like wow you actually doing international business now because back in like in high school I was saying I wanted to go to university to to do international business right. I didn't really know what that it what, what like what that meant like and when I went to university the business route didn't work for me at all like it wow. didn't yeah it didn't work but it's like now I understand business. It's not that I went to like specialize in one thing like, oh, like finances or whatever, investing. It's not like I know one thing. It's like I understand the concept of how business work better through experiences in Ghana. So yeah, it's, it's, it's the time is now. Ghana showed you that the time is now. Like you have little kids that are hustling on the street. You don't see little kids. Like we have child labor laws i'm not saying that they are bad i'm not saying that but i'm saying people are hustling like to provide for their family like there's a sense of unity like it's like we are hustling to to contribute to each other like we all have to go hustle it's not just you don't see a lot of one person sitting down and everybody else working like it's everyone in the unit 
working together in Ghana. So it's more family oriented, more definitely, communal. Definitely. And that, so that's another aspect of what we are pushed. If you're looking to repatriate, look at options as far as going with a small group. Um, like when you, like for instance, um, land in in uh, Teshima, the Brown Hafa region, you're looking at anywhere from five hundred to a thousand dollars for a quarter of an acre. Um, mm. You know, three or four people can get together, get you know, acquire that land, build them, you know, build them a home, build certain things, and share it your cost of living you know, and put natural operation to where you can have your own electricity water and so on but my point is um it's yeah. another way for you to live economical and also take you outside of the the mindset of just being in this uh, congested uh country where you don't even know if you're eating real food anymore yeah uh, no matter how nice the restaurant yeah. is and everything yeah you must include that on their land they're gonna have coconut trees papaya trees and what if you don't have you can plant it yeah it's mango trees avocado trees like what else uh cassava growing like everything grows on this land like even, palm nut trees even medicine you know, if you sick or not feeling well there's there's something there's herbs and medicine been grown forever Yes. Yeah. Uh, Ghana is a blessed country, so we're not we're breaking people into Africa. We're not just also just sending you out. We are sending you out in the middle of you know Ghana, um, but uh, but you know we, we are you know we're looking to build a future there because you know we see the pioneer options. But uh, Accra, Cape Coast, Elmina, Kumasi, um, yeah, a lot of our brothers and sisters that have repatriated live there. They move around. They, you know, there's not but good energy, and the you know, family. It's it's the time where Literally every time we look outside and we look around, everybody's just like dominating, and owning everything that you know we have access to. So, um, you know, it's not a coward move or a scared move because some people are like, well, we built this, you know, we built this. Like they act like they the one that like literally just went around and just built the whole civilization in America. But it's like I know I do understand where some people uh, think they're coming from. But it's you know I've always said it's a weak argument. You have an opportunity to build a future in Africa. Yeah. If we focus as much as we focus on trying to be equal to people in America and, and have civil rights and this right and have validation from you know from white folks and so on. You know, so my point to people is, you know, is let's be realistic. Uh, you have an opportunity. If you if you if you open, that's fine. If you're not, we're never gonna force you. And I do understand that some people want to remain in America and be good slaves and hopefully that they master one day will accept them and treat them right. But you know. For those who just have you know, the theory of what I believe in, which is that uh, you know we're divine people and we're put here to build, you know, create an enterprise of world for our family and friends and not to be anybody's subjugation of slave or anything. So, you know, Ghana is one of the greatest opportunity and now uh, people who know me over the years, I've done all I can to really push the energy. We do tours, investments, uh, we do uh, repatriation. Uh, you know, to where we just give you a good feel of the continent. And let me uh, let you uh, interject. I know you wanted to share a few things as far as some things oh, I was saying. It was one thing I didn't want to, oh. No, yeah. oh, it was about, um, oh, about me, like, liking Ghana. Does that mean that I dislike the States? That's one thing that I remember we were discussing earlier. Yeah, exactly. And, yeah, it can seem that way, like, oh, you like Ghana so much, so that means you dislike the States. And I would say, uh, I think the States is, it, it's great. Like, it's cool. Like, it's a cool place to be. <laughs> I cool understand. I, yeah, it's, it's a cool <laughs> plantation. Like, and me, I'm speaking very optimistically because, like, Absolutely. Uh, yeah, like yeah. some people will feel, like, you can understand that some people will feel insulted. I don't yeah. want the, the message, the main message to be distracted right. by Absolutely. someone being, feeling insulted. So, the States is a, a cool place to be. Like, I think it's cool. I understand, like. It's it's very it's very physically ple pleasing like nice roads nice buildings you know and there are opportunities here especially educational opportunities like in the funding that like like I was funded uh, basically like through through university like through scholarships and grants Absolutely. and so it's like I can I can really appreciate things like that but like Ghana is not something that I can actually like express because it's not a physical thing. It's like, it's it's very spiritual. Like my spirit, my spirit feels happy there. Like I feel, I feel free. Like I feel like, like I don't. It's like I don't think about danger. I don't think about like, 
it's not a lot of it's not the, the environment is like not so negative and you will still see negative things like you you'll still see like poverty or you'll still see one area that's like really dirty you'll still see some negative glitches here and there but overall it's just like the spiritual energy is very like happy uplifting uh, uh, genuine uh, just like it feels a it feels original absolutely and Ghana is a country where you literally you as you can see uh, it's it's not a country you're saying that it's a perfect country, but it's a yeah, country that perfect. you can grow and build with. Yes. And you can have something for yourself. Exactly. Yeah. You know? So, uh, so yes. Um, a lot of times, if we say something about a country like Ghana, like if I say that I'm gonna, you know, I'm gonna marry me, uh, you know, and you know, uh, a traditional woman from Ghana, and someone might say, "Hey, well, uh, what's wrong with you marrying a woman here in America?" First of all, I'm trying to get the hell out of this country. So I'm trying not to have any ties to, to yeah, the point too much. Yeah, because you have a kid here, you, yeah. Yeah, I'm not saying that if you, you can't do certain things. But I'm saying that when you're in a process and your mind is going somewhere, you're looking to build what you're looking to build in that country. I know it's difficult for some people to, to get the fact that you'd leave all of this greatness, all of this stuff, all of the nice jobs, all this money, all of this, this, that. Yeah, all that stuff is this entitlement of a slave high technology 21st century you just have all the nice stuff and then the feel good and, and everything but you know people like myself i'm at you know i'm at 40 this october and i want to contribute the next 20 years of my life to really live it billing billing certain things that we can have sustainably you know investing in development you know investing in doing things that's gonna open up opportunities for you know you know for us as a people you know for you know you know and just really take it to a different level, uh, yeah. and I feel Ghana ha offered you that opportunity. But being here in America, you're at the point where certain things are built and established to where it limits you and and limits your creativity. Like you know, but so for those of us who are innovative and have certain skill sets, you can create and do many wonderful things in Ghana. So I definitely had to this have, you know connect with you, brother, so you can share certain things with our family. Yeah. Um, because I'm showing people that there's more younger, younger people that's doing things in Ghana. Yeah. And it's not just uh, you know people that are just going doing their time of retirement because you know we can't. Some of us don't even need to go to the plantation here. Yeah. We just need to skip the plantation. It's kind of like those things you just you know you just you know you just, you know you just skip to the next level. Yeah. yeah. So like like people like myself is like sharing what the plantation life is and what it is. If you get one of those positions and you can save and invest and do certain things, you make it work for yourself. But if you're just gonna be there and you just do that paycheck to paycheck to buy all that fancy stuff, that's that's gonna depreciate the car, the house, you know, yeah. the boats and Material things like that. Clothes, yeah. You know, the clothing, this restaurant, that restaurant, you know, that's it you you you're gonna end up this you know, it's more feel like of a waste of life. So people like myself is not trying to uh, break anybody in, or just talk bad about them feeling like they have achieved the American dream or anything. But we have to think about our children and we have to think about the future of the world and the future of our people and think about are we going to consistently just work in a flow to do certain things. So what, what we consistently push is, um, you know, is, is, is as far as this more of our people being open to marrying to the African family into the culture into the, the roots into the investment into the business into repatriation yes and being there to where you wake up one day and you don't have to de depend on america you don't have to depend on anyone anyone you can provide for yourself you know your community that you're a part of produces its own electricity its mm -hmm. own water its own internet its own sewage containment its own construction as far as investment in in roads, bridges, buildings, yeah. and things like that. It's hard for some of us to 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 to, to put that in, in thoughts and everything. Yeah. People like myself have traveled like so much around possible. the world. Yeah. I've seen so much. I've seen even when I went, I was in in 1999. I was in the Navy and went to Dubai and was out in the, in, in, the, in the middle of the water. I was you know, doing aircraft maintenance on a, on a carrier. And then when you first just go to one of those places, you like the first thing in your mind. First of all, you're on a ship that have internet and all kind of stuff. So you're like. It's like wow, you can like literally be out in the middle of nowhere and have civilization. Yeah, you can literally yeah. be out in the desert and create an incredible world of just business investment, uh, homes living. And, yeah, know, to the point yeah. where a country like Dubai, it, it's just grown. But it's that same theory that we were talking about earlier about uh, Walt Disney and, and, and Florida and about uh, 
you know, the, the wetland property and about turning that into one of the most incredible real estate and investment uh, operation of you know of ever. Yeah. You know, we yeah. talk about we even took it back to having conversations about McDonald's and about the founders of or co-founders of the, the corporation, but just talking about how they started talking about real estate, buying real estate. And it's the yeah. same concept that we're talking about. We're not talking about anything new. Even when we talk about communal living and people living in different parts of the U.S. and things. My point to people is those concepts and things are available in there. We're just talking about doing things in Africa. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So yeah. enjoy that. I know we've been talking for a while, but uh, let me know if you want to share anything before we close. Uh, and, you know, definitely thank uh, the folks uh, for tuning in. And definitely go to the website, africaforthafricans.org which will take you to everything else. Hit the subscribe button on YouTube and uh, we'll give you more feedback. And, you know, you know, we're just sharing as much as we know about this whole process of repatriation and investment to help as many people out there to see the light of that we should grow the African continent yes. to be the greatest place for black people. So yes. if 10 million black people want some jobs and look for opportunities, the continent can say, hey, brothers and sisters, yeah. we got you. And it's, a, it's a new day. Exactly. Yeah, I feel like I haven't really scratched the surface about like things that I can say about my experiences there. So, uh, if anyone wants to like you know speak to me directly or have any questions, you can reach me on Facebook. That's why I communicate mostly. Uh, my name on Facebook is Kokai Bakari Pastel. My first name is K O K A Y I Bakari B A K A R I Pastel. Yeah, so. Yeah, I, I would just like to continue. Like, I actually feel good to, like, talk about Ghana and my experiences there because I feel like it's good for us to have, like, a different perspective, you know, on life. Like, like especially as a melanated person, I feel like it's good to, you know, get a different perspective on how life can be. Like, how you actually do have a fair chance in a business. Like, you know, you actually do have a, a entry to the market, but the, the market just might not be in the location that you're currently in. Like, that might not be the market that's lucrative for you. A lot of people go to different countries and, you know, build a whole new life. A lot, a lot of people come to America and build a whole new life and they're from a different country. That, that they left, they weren't rich in that original country. Like, they, they left for, you know, greener pastures. So I feel like we should also be open to the idea, like as melanated people, we should, a lot of times we say, oh no, this is like, I don't want to go to Africa. Even if you don't stay in Africa, I feel like you should at least go for the experience to, you know, get that feel. It can give you a fresh start, even in the States. Even if you're a person that, that doesn't want to live there, I still feel like it would be so great for, you know, you to check it out, to get that new perspective on life, to freshen up, to pick some ideas. You know, you can you can live over here. You can be in, investing in something over there. And that's promoting the economy over there. You will still be doing a good deed, but you just have your preference on where you want to live. So, yeah, like, <laughs> I, I, I love to express these type of things. Like, I, like I want to share. Like, I'm open to sharing. So, yeah, feel free to get in contact with me. Absolutely, family. We definitely have to get you on this journey for a lifetime. We go to um, different parts of Africa, uh, mainly Ghana, every May and November. Um, uh, different itineraries on the uh, website are going to be, you know, we have uh, right now a Brazil July 2017 journey that's about to take off. Uh, we're heading out to Ghana this uh, May 2017 and also Ghana, to Togo, Benin, November 2017. And 2018 is a beautiful year. Um, Ghana and Cote d'Ivoire, May wow. 2018. Ethiopia, Tanzania, uh, May 2018. I mean, excuse me, uh, November 2018. Uh, and so on. And just looking to uh, really connect and share with our brothers and sisters more of uh, what we're looking to build on African content. But uh, the focus has to be more repatriation and investments and more of us uh, taking things to the next level which is really just us building what we need to build on the African continent and little by little just being as self-sufficient as possible. Yes. And I think our ancestors would really appreciate us moving that energy forward because it's very respectable. Uh, us just sitting around us begging, you know, for uh, you know, uh, our slave masters to treat us like our respectable citizens is just not going to happen. Uh, it just, it's just outlived this uh, concept and it's like brainless and we just, yeah. So... Family, uh, once again... Uh, and let me say one more thing. Go ahead, brother. Okay. 
So he just promoted the tour. So I'm also working on the tour. Uh, it will be my first tour. Uh, right now, I'm planning on it being from August 31st to September 11th. It's going to be mainly like a coastal a tour based on the coastal regions. And it's going to involve a lot of uh, cultural dance, African cultural dance. Cultural dance and a little bit of yoga and, you know, a little bit of investment opportunities and beaches and, like, enjoyment. Like, I really want to reach out to a younger crowd because I feel like um, a lot of us, a lot of us melanated people, we wait till we're older to, you know, start traveling and stuff. And I feel like it's really important for us to come while we're younger. Like, anywhere from 18 to 35, it's, I feel like we, we, we need to come here, like... You'll feel it. You can feel the impact a lot stronger when you come uh, younger, I feel. So, yeah, I'm currently in the works of promoting or doing my own tour. But I will keep you updated through Facebook. So, yeah, definitely. All right, and you definitely have to give people some uh, uh, email address or website. Yeah, or email address. Okay, <laughs> right now my email address is kokai, K-O-K-A-Y-I, 1991 at gmail.com. And my Facebook you can add me as Kokai Bakari Pastel. And also on Instagram, I'm Kokai. Once again, that's K O K A Y I 91 on Instagram. Kokai 91. Absolutely, family. Look out for our brother. Uh, he's a part of the grown energy of uh, more and more brothers that are going to be doing uh, tours, investments, repatriation, a lot of things. Um, you know, and we're looking to encourage more people to take advantage of opportunities of doing tourist. Uh, base business because it gets you really connected into the country, yes. into the culture, and into a lot of different things. Uh, it's very underrated, uh, but I want to see more of us get into it. So good, uh, so good job, brother, um, and good energy. And um, you know, definitely want to hope that that energy of yours can connect into more of our brothers and sisters, so they can realize that they can do different things and possibly have a future in Africa. So, family, we're gonna keep you posted with everything. Uh, once again, family, it's Bomani Tamba, and we're live on Revolutionary Cam. And we're at this. We're here at uh, you know Bomani Technology, and you see the banner in the background. Africa uh, for the Africans. The, 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 the key connection to uh, one Africa and so on. So we're gonna keep it strong and keep you posted, and we catch you. The journey continues. <laughs>